I have those moments that I I feel like I don't belong. I I'm not equipped enough. I don't have the capacity to lead them. Imposter syndrome is there for everyone, and as Nini said, you handle it by being authentic as well. Hi, this is a series where we'll be meeting inspiring people and diving into what goes on behind the scenes, what makes them inspiring, and how can we replicate that. Today we are going to meet Shumate Royo from Philippines. I'm really excited about this conversation. Hi Shumate. Hello Annie, how are you? Very good Shumate, welcome to the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Right. Shumate Royo is the Managing Director of DEFCON Philippines, and she's also the Community Engagement Man Manager at Talino Ventures. Yes. You are the epitome of diversity in a tech community, and you lead a tech community. Let's dive into that. Tell us what brought you to DEFCON. Oh, it's kind of a long story, actually. Um, what what brought me to DevCon, which is a very highly tech community groups, and I am a non techy person and the women as well. So it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. Let's just say, a couple of years ago, five or seven years ago, I'm very much involved attending conferences by tech communities because I came from an academic background. I'm a teacher, history in particular, so it's really kind of not connected in such a way. But I was busy attending conferences so that I could learn more about the technologies and what's in it for my students when I meet them in my classroom. So that's what actually led me to become more involved and volunteer in, in several communities and eventually led me to become part of DevCon um, community. So you were a history teacher and you were yeah. curious about how your students can use technology and that led you to the tech community. Yes. That is inspiring because there are, there's a lot of question uh, always about do you have to really be hardcore tech to participate in a tech community? And um, if I'm not, then will there be, will I be discriminated? Will I be an outsider in a tech community? So how yeah. would you answer that? Um, what, what made you um, feel like you're one among that tech community when you started off okay. with TechCon? Yeah, to be honest, I actually felt that before that I have that feeling of I'm, I don't belong to this community because of the skill set that I have. It's something that what is it that I can contribute to the community. So to, to for me to avoid that kind of feeling being um, someone who doesn't belong to a tech community group from, from a background of non-tech, I decided to look for what are my strengths. So my strength particularly is more for people. So I, commun I, I connect with people because probably because I'm a teacher by profession. So it's easy for me to mingle with other people, although it's kind of hard as well to build rapport with new people, especially if they have diverse or if they have different um, um, set of likes. Like it's something that there are non, there are tech people, but I am a non-tech one. So I, I try to work with the strength that I have and that is connecting with the people. Perfect. At Microsoft, we say that digital transformation is really about people first and technology next. It's about what problem to solve and then you think about technology. So it makes a lot of sense that if you want to be a community leader, uh, you, you, you can lead from the people part and bring mm -hmm. technical communities and people who have similar interests together around maybe say Java or PHP or Node.js or whatever it is. But ultimately it's about people and that they're using some tools of technology. Yes. Uh, so, so it's very inspiring, Shumate, how you became uh, the managing director of DevCon Philippines. How big is DevCon Philippines? Currently, um... Roughly, we've reached almost 50,000 to get with all the activities and events that we have, but our volunteer actually almost reached 1,000 people. 
that counting the DCTX program that we launched just this pandemic because um, if I'm going to have a total of active members and volunteers that we have reached roughly around 2,000 perhaps, but the active ones or the members that we have in the community more or less around 500. So those are the people who are helping us organize event in person during the, the 2019 event where we can hold uh, in, in person events. Right. I, I came to Cagayan de Oro for the 2019 DEF CON and, and man, what a, a amazing congregation that was. I think there were more than 600 developers there and so yes. much energy around, around that. Uh, so that's amazing. Now you talked about DCTX and the pandemic. So that uh, reminds me that on March 6th, mm -hmm. Philippines declared code red and shoot it side if you will uh, orders. Um, and DevCon's uh, founder, Winston Damarillo and I were having a chat and he was saying, this is really frustrating. Now the only thing to do is do something about it. And then she made you guys actually did some amazing stuff, uh, which led to by April 3rd, you had uh, a critical um, um, rapid pass application yes. live for the government. Tell us what happened in that period between March 6th and April 3rd. Okay, that's actually intense. That's the most, that's the busiest month we ever had. Almost everyone's like a doctor 24-7 online. So March, um, actually officially the Philippines was in lockdown around March 15. But March 16, DevCon decided to, to call for volunteers that we can build like a tracing app at first. That's the initial idea is to build a contact tracing app for the government to use because that's something that we don't have or was built during that early days. But a couple of discussions with the government agencies and then they identified that this is what we actually need, which is the rapid pass, wherein it is a QR code um, that we can use on checkpoints so that the, the, the priority vehicles, the frontliners can immediately immediately pass through the checkpoints instead of checking their IDs or whatsoever. So that's exactly what we built in, in from, from starting March. And then we launched it April, but alongside of it, there's actually another three projects that we built aside from the rapid pass. We have also, of course, the contact tracing app, which is to trace COVID. We also built um, Relief Agad. It is actually an application wherein the Filipinos can get their disbursement that is a fund allocated to the poor so that they can immediately receive it because that's everyone since they don't have jobs. So the government was able to come up with funding for them so that they can have it. And then another project that we have is, is for, for um, the logistics sector, which is um, um, Flag Express. It's more on delivering the donations yes. to the needed um, people. Right. This is, this is really inspiring and this is like the ultimate thing a community of tech developers can do because you had what, some 700 developers um, in, in, in your teams? How many developers, how many teams for how many apps were you okay. working on? How many out? teams for the DCTX project alone, we were able to pull uh, 1,603 in particular volunteers who joined the DCTX project, four projects, which I mentioned a while ago, and then there are 49 teams built and everything worked remotely. We have developers not just in the Philippines, across the Philippines, but even abroad. We have from Japan, even as, as far as UK and then US, also developers who joined and helped try to build those projects that we have. Right. I remember seeing the post on LinkedIn, open call for developers to come join this. And that's when I uh, reached out to uh, to you guys and said, hey, this seems like an inspiring thing. How can we help? And so uh, we, we were able to contribute to that as well, Shumit. So we are, we are grateful for the opportunity to contribute to something so critical to uh, to Philippines uh, as a whole. So a little bit about yourself now. Um, what do you do in your free time, like outside of tech and communities? Okay, outside in tech community, if there's no lockdown in the Philippines, I'll be surfing all day. <laughs> I'm a surfer and then if not on surfing season, I actually have a couple of musical instruments in my home. I have a keyboard or a piano and then I'm trying to learn violin as well. And if I'm not in the mood of playing music, I try to paint. 
So those are the things that I've explored and been doing for for a couple of months already. Kind of lot, but it's enjoy, enjoy. Yeah. Nice. And what inspires you? Huh? If you're gonna ask me from the perspective of someone as a community builder, what are my inspirations? Is always seeing the people that we were able to reach and the program output that we have it's more on as you mentioned a while ago it's always people first technology second and always inspires me to see young developers future gigs of this country being involved in our activities with what we're doing and then for even professional developers who are we were able to help them level up their skill set because of the code camps that we've been doing so i think it's always inspiration from the people that I work with and the people that we, we were able to reach out to our programs. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, that's what keeps me going as well. When someone comes up to you and says that, hey, uh, remember we worked on this or we were in that session together and now this is what I'm doing. It's it's immense. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's been great chatting to you, Shumate. And what is your advice for the audience, for someone who uh, wants to be, aspires to be a community leader uh, or just join the community? So what, what would be your um, advice? Okay, um, perhaps to target market, since you mentioned someone who would like to build a community and someone who would just like to join in the community. For those who are aspiring to be a community builder or community enabler, it's always been my principle to always put it in my mind not to be perfect but be authentic because you're mm. dealing with people. People will always know if you are real or you, if you are genuine with them or if you have some other motives with them. And it's always, I've been, I learned it in the past years being in a community that it's always people first. So no matter what happens, it's always your team and the people that you're reaching out that really matters. Because even though if you have those technologies set in place, but if you don't have a, a very good relationship with the people that you're reaching out, it doesn't make sense. Who are going to use your technology? Who are you going to equip if they, are, if they don't even feel that they are welcome in your community? So I think those are the things that, that I always put in my mind as a community builder. The second one is um, being a community builder, so of course, always go beyond your limits coming from the perspective and from the experience of being someone non-tech and leading a tech highly tech community groups i have those moments that i i feel like i don't belong I, i'm not equipped enough i don't have the capacity to lead them but i try to challenge myself as a community builder there's always room for improvement and always have an opportunity to for you to learn so go beyond your limits but be kind to yourself as well because if you're dealing with people, you know, you're putting in energy, you're investing emotions as well, not just your resources and talent, but also you're giving everything for the community to thrive. So it's kind of always be kind as well to yourself, take breaks. That's why I surf. <laughs> That's why there are other things that I do aside from the, from the techie side, techie world that I'm involved with. And then for the community, for those who would like to explore community and become part of the community, number one, is always look for a community that you will believe in their vision and mission. Because if you don't believe in what they're doing, you're not going to grow from them, with them. Um, it's a matter of, of finding the right community that you will also be involved. And you're not just a consumer, but, someone that, but you will also be a contributor to that community. Because that's what community is all about. It's, 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 it's a give and take um relationship if you're not just getting everything from community but what else you can contribute to the community so um for those who would like to, to to become part of the community or any community that's out there there's a lot of things there's a lot of communities that you can check but find the one that is really connected to you and you're really passionate about and then you grow from there that's it thank you shume there's so much of uh, wisdom in those words so be authentic if you want to be a, a community leader, find the right community for you if you're coming in. And uh, imposter syndrome is there for everyone. And then you said you handle it by being authentic as well. So awesome. Thank you so much for the time uh, spent with us, Shumate. And we're looking forward to seeing what DevCon is going to do in the coming years and how it's going to grow. 
Thank you, Annie. And I would like also take, to take this opportunity to thank Microsoft for what you've been doing and so you've been supporting DevCon even though pre-pandemic time. So Microsoft has been there supporting the DevCon, being a strong advocate and partner of, of DevCon community since day one. So we would like to thank um, DevCon on behalf of, of, of DevCon community and Winston also would like to extend our, our deepest gratitude to, to Microsoft for helping us during the pandemic um, time and looking forward for more partnership with Microsoft as well. Great! Thanks, Shumate! If you enjoyed this video, you can watch the other episodes in the series by clicking on the video thumbnail you see here. You can also sign up for Microsoft's Source Newsletter and receive regular digest of technical content as well as exclusive invitations to our developer events. Join our developer community today. Lastly, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. We'd love to hear what you think, so drop your comments below and let us know what content around diversity in developer community you'd like to hear about. We'll bring you more of your favorite content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.